Goodbye, though, to Busted Brackets. <laughs> Because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. We welcome in now John Fanta, the voice of the Big East, one of the Cleveland most knowledgeable. Zone, Northeast Ohio zone. John! Before you say bull, yeah. I got, we got to do one thing with John okay. real quick. He was on part of my take <laughs> last week. Phenomenal interview with John Fanta and part of my take. Check it out if you didn't listen. But he told a story that I know none of you guys have heard. So, John, <laughs> will you do us the kind favor of telling us the story of how you went from a football player to a football broadcaster? A broadcaster in general. Yeah, yeah, uh, football broadcaster at first, Mike, and, and, and thank you for, for having me, guys. It's great to be with you. So I went to St. Ignatius High School. Um, I, I went to St. Bernadette Grade School I uh, in Westlake and was a left guard, a position my dad played. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, I never got into a running back drill or wide receiver drill, although I envied it. Uh, it wasn't going to happen. And when you're in fifth, sixth, seventh grade, and you're you're automatically on the first day of practice getting sent to the sled, it kind of tells you kind of tells you where things are going, and you just keep going home after practice and eating breaded pork chops for dinner because that's what you're being told to do. Um, so <laughs> I get to St. Ignatius High School, and I'm like, you know, my dad played there; he wore 64. I gotta wear 64. I'm like in the locker room fighting for my jersey. I got to wear 64. Well, safe to say I was the only one fighting for that number. <laughs> um, so we jump into training camp, and you know I'm in my freshman year of high school, Ignatius, and uh, I get inserted into a game, and uh, you know a, a freshman B game at Ignatius. I'm like, this is great. I'm on the left guard, and um, you know my quarterback comes in the huddle and he calls. You know, he's like uh, 20. I'm a left guard. He's like 27 counter on two. And he looks over to me on the left side and he goes, actually, we're going to run 44 on one, uh, which means <laughs> we're going to go on the opposite side of the line on, on this play. We're not going to go with a 27 counter. I get called for a holding. Three <laughs> plays later, I get called for holding. I look at my offensive line coach. I go, coach, I'm sorry. I go, do you want to take me out? He goes, no, I want to see how long that you can stay in there to see if you'll actually live. <laughs> so, it's at those moments when you think to yourself like maybe this isn't for me I get done with my sophomore year and, and I go Chuck Kyle does player evaluations for anybody that's about to do varsity Chuck Kyle Cleveland legend as you guys all well know St. Ignatius high school football coach 11 time state champion he calls me into his office I walk in it's a Friday morning I uh, you know Fridays at Ignatius they had some some boxed up donuts I definitely had a donut at 7.30. I walk into his office, I go, coach, I go, coach, what's happening? You know, I'm in a great mood. And he goes, have a seat. He goes, you know, I'm, I, I got to tell, tell you. He goes, you really, really have a talent for speaking. You know, you're, you're a lot better at talking about this sport than you are playing it. Oh, my God. That's crazy. And I'm on the other side of the room, and I'm thinking, I, I, I went from having a really nice Friday morning to thinking, wow, I am, I am really that bad of a football player. <laughs> and it was at that moment, though, that reality check happened, and 10 months later, I was at Fawcett Stadium in the NFL booth calling the OHSA Division I State Championship game, and I had the call as Ignatius won the last time they won a state championship in 2011. They have not won since then. I called that game, and I, I looked down at some of my buddies on the backup line when it was 28 degrees in Canton, and they've all got hand warmers, not going to sniff the field. And I thought, you know what? I turned to my partner, Greg. I said, pass me another popcorn from the media food. I'm loving this. This is much better. This is much better than getting called for holdings. Hey, listen, man. You listen. See, oh, this, that's this, a good story. That's what I love, and man. You took that advice. I love it because now you can look at all those nice Saint Ignatius people. Like I'm getting the bag. I'm John Fanner, and I'm calling all the plays. <laughs> oh my! Hey, hey, as you all know, 
advice to all find what you're good at yep. and just stay in the damn lane I, it's great advice I, now I do want to ask I do want to ask a question and this this is not a backhanded question how did it how did this happen how how did Caitlin Clark become the face of all college basketball not just That's women's true. but hmm. like if great. and I was watching Paul Pierce and, and I was watching uh, uh, Kevin Garnett and they said if you told if you asked us as NBA players, Who's the best player in college football, college basketball today? I I couldn't tell you. I would just say I I know who Caitlin Clark is though. This is amazing. Great question. It's a, it's a it's a tremendous question. So to me, passing Pete Maravich, it, it, it that that is absolutely noteworthy to begin with, uh, to be the all time scorer. She she scores at an incredible rate. Incredible rate, but it's her personality that I think makes her the the greatest of the faces. Right now, I think she's the biggest thing in sports. Um, you you can't watch TV without seeing her in some capacity, and she's earned it. But you know what she is, guys? In a world of divide, she's a terrific American sports story. She's from Iowa. She's from Iowa. She decided to stay home. Back on her on the U seventeen team, back in U seventeen, like the the USA team, yeah, she got cut. That's she crazy. got oh cut. God. That's crazy. Yeah, she the the the, the U S staff at that level said, ah, you know what, we don't have a roster spot for you. Wow. So this is this is the case of someone who at sixteen seventeen, it hasn't always been you know sunshine and rainbows. She got cut. She faced adversity. Now with players that she got cut. And, and they were put on the team, she's better than all of them. And she stayed in her home state. She didn't go to South Carolina. She didn't go to UConn. She didn't go to Tennessee. She didn't go to Notre Dame. She stayed in her home state. She's made the Iowa brand millions, if not billions of dollars. She's humble. I think she's very humble. A lot, a lot of people, there's some people who do not. I don't know what you're watching here. You're just jealous of how great she is. And we're in a time where the women's game, I call men's and women's games. The women's games, they play four quarters. There's only one timeout a quarter. One. If a team takes a timeout, they go to commercial. If you hit the under five, media timeout, they take one, they come back, they play the rest of the quarter, they move on. The women's game has a much more watchability factor. Mm. And the sport, the sport now has shot making that's the best it's ever been. The women's game has evolved. There are, co there are women's coaches who I trust more in how they run their offense more than men's coaches. Now, I just think the players have, have fully caught on to what's happening. And, and the level of female athletes never been greater. There's never been a better time for it. And you have the ultimate American sports story that's at the forefront of it in Caitlin Clark. Yeah, and according to your network, Fox Sports, the ratings have been better for women's overall, or there's been more viewers on average for women's games than men's, which is... We've never, I don't think we've ever seen that before. And if you're a young girl, you're, you're going to watch. This is great. I mean, it really is. It's it's terrific for the sport. It's terrific beyond sport. And she's brought people together. And she's spectacular. And I got to tell you guys, if she makes the Final Four, Cleveland, Ohio is going to get, this is, I can't, I'm saying this, next to the Cleveland Browns, Cleveland, Ohio will get the most attention as a city in sports this year, more than the Guardians, more than even the Cavaliers, if Caitlin Clark's in that city in the Final Four. Because the amount of live shots, the amount of stage setting, the amount of scene setting, and that ticket price is going to be out the wazoo if Caitlin Clark makes the Final Four. Cleveland, If Caitlin Clark ever won the national championship, Cleveland, Ohio would be the center stage for one of the great all-time runs, all-time caps to a college career we've ever seen. I mean, I want to move to the men's tournament here, but real quick, that weekend in Cleveland, the women's Final Four, opening day for the Guardians, and the, uh, the um, Eclipse. Eclipse. The Eclipse. It's going to be bonkers. There's going to be zillions of people here. John, we got to get to the men's tourney. First of all, what happened to my Johnnies? They didn't get in. <laughs> I thought they were in, John. What happened? That the is, highest, the yeah. highest net team to not make the NCAA tournament. 
It, the, the, so the NCAA, for those who don't know, they don't use RPI anymore. They went to this metric called the net. St. John's, John's had the highest net with, without making it. So it's disappointing. They just didn't rack up enough quality wins at them in the non-conference. Yeah, that's what ended up dooming them. But the committee was bad. The, the, the committee <laughs> the committee misseeded teams left and right. Auburn is top five in the metrics. They won the SEC tournament. They've had a phenomenal season, and they're on the four line? That's crazy. How are that you top crazy. five in the metrics and you're on the four seed line? Dayton, no disrespect to my flyer faithful. I love you, Dayton, but you didn't beat a single team in the field and you're a seventh seed. Florida Atlantic's an eighth seed. They have two awful losses. If Florida Atlantic didn't make the final four, would they be an eighth seed this year? No. There's a human element to all this stuff, and I thought the committee really screwed some things up. Oh, I'm glad you brought up Florida Atlanta because it brings me to the Ohio State coach search. You know, they decided to go with Jake Diebler over Dusty May. And I wanted to know, do you think that that's the right choice? I do think it's the right choice. I do think that Dusty, to his credit, to his credit, amazing run with Florida Atlantic. But one March Madness, we then equate to he's a legend. Mm. It, you got to pump the brakes a little bit. Like, Shaka Smart led VCU to the Final Four. Remember when VCU went all the way from first four to Final Four? Yep. Shaka Smart hasn't even been to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament since then. That was like yeah. 12 years ago. So you can't always say just because they went on a random NCAA tournament run, that now makes them an unbelievable coach. There's a randomness to uh, the tournament. To me, why did Ohio State hire Jake Diebler? First off, he's cheap. Second off, the players love him. The players love him. I, I will tell you when I thought this was possible. Back in December, I did a feature on Bruce Thornton uh, and Bryce Sensabaugh. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm Roddy Gale. You know, I'm doing a feature on Ohio State and, you know, uh, and Bryce, what he ended up becoming, but Bruce Thornton and Gale and, and the Buckeyes. And all throughout the feature, they're talking about Coach Diebler. Coach Diebler this, Coach Diebler that. We love Coach Diebler. And in my head, I'm like, wait a minute. Who's the head coach here? Who's the head coach here? Because these guys are talking about the right-hand man like he's the head man. I, I think that for Ohio State, I, I'm okay with this. Give him, he, he went 6-2. and two. The guy beat Purdue. He's a younger guy. The, the, the days of the old-timers, with the exception of like a Patino, Adam, th those days are over. Yeah. You've got to find the right guy who can manage a roster. This is pro sports now. Forget it, folks. It's no longer amateurism. This is pay for play. This guy's younger. He's got a little bit more of an NBA style to him. I think the players respect and like him. I like that the Buckeyes are giving this guy a shot. I, I do. I, I, I think this is a good move for them. Go Bucks, John. Give Bucks. Me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the long shots. I, I don't care about the blue bloods. I want to see uh, Indiana State Westland getting in, <laughs> in the Final Four. That's what I want to see. <laughs> but give me, give me the name of a team that 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 is is off the beaten trail, but seriously has the right mix of seniors and leaderships and all those good things that help underdogs advance in the tournament and that could that could cut down the nets. Oh, I'm ready, Mike. Mike Lucas, what was your read? What, what, which, who are you promoting here at the top of this segment? We are, we are a FanDuel partner. So if you want to bet okay. on this, use John's advice and bet it with FanDuel, America's number one sports. Yeah, bet it with FanDuel. All right, here you go, folks. These are your some of your picks free of charge. We're gonna help make Hold you some on. money. Let me get right my now. phone. Let, Let me get, get my phone. Phone's out. Let me get, get it my... out. <laughs> get it out. So, so one that I firmly believe in. Okay. James Madison mm. to shock Wisconsin. James Madison has a dynamic duo. They're named T.J. Bickerstaff and Terrence Edwards. They're a 12 seed. They can pull it off over Wisconsin. I like New Mexico, the 11 seed. I think James Madison and New Mexico both make the Sweet 16. Yes, Jeez. New Mexico wow. over Clemson. I, I like the Lobos. I like the season that they've had. Richard Pitino's done a great job. Give me Charleston <laughs> over Alabama. Alabama doesn't defend a lick. They don't defend a lick. I like Charleston to pull off the shocker. And I'm going extra shock. The Ivy League. Remember when Princeton beat Arizona last year? And Princeton made the Sweet 16 out of nowhere? The Ivy League is a great league. Yale's going to be ready to surprise Auburn. Give mm. me 
Yale, the Bulldogs. I think that they pull off an upset. Mm. And I like, remember the name Will Wade, cheater at LSU? Well, guess what? <laughs> like everybody else, he, got a, he, he gets a second chance in life. He has been a coach down at McNeese State. The Cowboys haven't made the NCAA tournament since 2002. They will face a Gonzaga team that I believe is overrated. I like McNeese to pull it off over Gonzaga and wow. knock off the Bulldogs. Wow. This Those is, are some interesting upsets. McNeese has like 32 wins this year. They've been really, really good. Southland's a frisky conference. Too. Yeah, let me go. That's a parlay, yeah. picking all those. I'm people. putting it together right, right now. now. Hey, hey, oh, no. hey, you know, Let's go. Need, That's a confident John Randall right there. I just need to Give me Mexican. Drake over Washington State. Uh, sprinkle Drake. a little bit on sprinkle a little bit on Sanford against Kansas. Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCullough for Kansas, their best two players Drake haven't played. That they're gonna, they're gonna they're gonna play this week. But watch out. And if you want to have some fun, the last two years of 15 has beaten a two. Yeah. Just put, just put 50 bucks on any 15 to win. I guarantee you'll have a fun time. Mm. <laughs> now, we talked about all the upsets, John, but I got to say, and maybe it's prisoner of the moment because of what they did to my Johnnies in, in the semifinals. But, man, UConn is just like a machine. Watch it. They all, they're all, every player that plays for that team is so good. Do you think anybody can stop them? Who has the best chance of beating them? I, I don't. I think that the, 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 the team with the best chance to beat them is probably Tennessee on the other side of the bracket. Here's why. Tennessee has a bucket getter in Dalton Connect. Rick Barnes' teams defend. The defense was always there. But now he's got a score, an All-American score. I think in a rematch, they met North Carolina back in <laughs> December. I think Carolina's a different team now. But, guys, I, I don't see it. I don't see anybody stopping UConn. They're a wagon. Like, if Kentucky gets red hot with their freshmen, maybe. But they don't defend well enough. To me, UConn answers every question. All-American point guard and Tristan Newton. Uh, Donovan Klingon's an elite rim protector, a unicorn. Stefan Castle's a one-and-done freshman who's a stud. Cam Spencer's wired to compete. I just look at the East. Like, I know that Iowa State won the Big 12 tournament. I know that Illinois won the Big 10 tournament. I don't like conference tournament champions in the NCAA tournament first round, second round. I think sometimes when you when you exert yourself a lot the week before in your conference tournament, I don't think it always translates to NCAA tournament success mm. because I think it takes a lot out of you. Yeah. UConn is a wagon. They will make the Final Four. I believe they will win the national championship again. By the way, if you're filling out a bracket, we have a UCSS Bracket Challenge group on ESPN. The link is in our YouTube comment. Uh, YouTube comments. It's pinned. It'll be on our community tab. We'll tweet it out as well. So if you want to participate, John, if you want to be a part of this, I'll send you the link too. Feel free to submit your picks there. I do have a question for you though, John. I agree with what you said earlier about the committee just kind of being on acid this week and picking teams in certain seedings, but it felt like they were a little diabolical. Like they picked A&M to play Nebraska on both the men's and women's side right after A&M poached Nebraska's general uh, athletic director, excuse me. They had the PMT connection, James Madison versus Wisconsin in two different situations. It felt like there was a couple of these that were very selectively picked. Do you think the committee actually takes any of those outside factors into consideration when making these first-round matchups? They say they don't, but I, I, I'm I, sorry. There's too many coincidences within this. You know, they, they're going to say that they don't. Of course they're going to say that they don't. But, I, you know, the NFL schedule makers are going to do things for the ratings. You're telling me the NCAA tournament's not going to try to? Uh, I, I just, I, I don't think it's nothing, Mike. I don't think it's everything, you know, that they're always looking for the best matchup. Because if they were, we wouldn't see Virginia in the NCAA tournament. Stunk. We wouldn't see Boise State. Like, Boise State got in the last four in. That's a crime. That's a crime. Their resume was much better than that. But, like, Boise State, Colorado, Virginia, Colorado State in the first four games in Dayton, those probably aren't going to do great ratings. So it's not everything. It's not everything. But it is worth looking at. Like, there are some things that the committee does. Now, all those committee members are in their 50s and 60s. They don't know what pardon my take is. They've never heard of it. <laughs> uh, but, but there are some coincidences that happen that make you say, what's going on? The A&M Nebraska thing in both brackets? Come on, guys. Come on. With the AD situation of, of, yeah. uh, of the, the AD getting, post, uh, getting poached from one school and the other, of course there's a human element here. Like, at the end of the day... We, we say, oh, you know, college football playoff committee, too. Like, thank you, guys. Thank you for all of your hard work in this. 
At the end of the day, they meet in a boardroom, then they go out at night for a ribeye, mashed potatoes, <laughs> asparagus, and a glass of wine. Thank you for your service, committee member. Let's, let's credit to them for doing their job, but come on. If, hey, Bull, if Bull, if you told me, Bull, but put Bull back in the two shot. Bull, if, if somebody came to us, if somebody came to us and said, hey, you guys are going to pick some teams, and by the way, we'll throw in a medium rare at night, I'd be like, where do I sign? And I'm I, in. Can I split the load and mash with my man tonight after we pick our field of 68? Like, I, what the frick? I want the Delmonico. Yeah, I, want, I want the Delmonico. Let's go. Or, or the rib in, rib, <laughs> yeah. the bone in rib eye. No, you want the filet. And you know what, G. Bush? G. No. Bush, you can come too because we're going on the NCAA black card. And, and you can come too. We're going to charge. We're going to charge the NCAA's corporate card. We'll That's just right. run up the tab as much as we want. They got all the money in the world. You can tell Tyvis is skinny because the, the skinny guys like so, Tyvis and Jay want the filet. The filet. Yes. No Filets real steak disgusting. eater eats filet. Worst cut of the worst the cut filet of the is the best filet. cut. You, there's no uh, fat on it. That's the best part. You want the fat. No, you come on. That is, I've never ate it's a piece of fat. You know, this is the thing. They rob y'all of <laughs> he steak. He had to take his blood. <laughs> John, listen. They rob y'all. You know what, Tyvis? Listen. Tyvis, enjoy your salad. Enjoy your wonderful <laughs> Italian wedge or whatever the hell you got going on. You rob, you rob a pot of eggs. I'm a Japanese Wagyu <laughs> filet eater. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All out of our price bracket. That's all out of our price range. Hey, Enjoy John. your avocado toast. Y'all, listen, John, y'all get robbed of the steak. No. Because you got to cut the we fat off. We get the flavorful no. steaks. You, I eat the fat. Listen, you got to cut the fat off. And no, you steak don't. You eat about it. this big. Let me order you. No. You got this big. Give me your steak. I Give me your is, fat. Y'all see. Time is goes, I'll have the salmon. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, man. You might be right. <laughs> <laughs> give, give me the halibut. Nobody <laughs> eats eating the halibut, bro. Hey, I miss, I miss in March Madness terms, you're on my bubble now, buddy. You're on the bubble. Hey. hey. Kinda sorta. Kinda sorta. Hey, John, I got one more before we get you out of here. What way would you, like, so right now, you, you look at the tournament. This is the best time for college basketball. It just, it, you know, it don't matter who's in the tournament, what it is, you just gonna watch or you gonna, you gonna put a little wager down. What way would you change, um, the regular season or conference tournaments or anything, or would you just leave it as is? Because right now, people check out during the regular season. What would you do? I would start the season Thanksgiving week. Start it during when it's feast week because people mm -hmm. watch the Maui. They watch these multi-team yep. events because there's not a ton before mm -hmm. the football Thanksgiving. Capitalize on a window. Start Thanksgiving week. Do not expand the tournament. Do not, do not, do not expand yes. the tournament. Let Greg Sankey and the football people want to expand it. You're already doing stuff to college football. Stay in. Remember when I stayed in my lane with the left guard thing? Mm -hmm. Just stay in your lane. Don't try to impact basketball. It's it, the, the NCAA tournament, you all know this, we're all going to be following schools, some of which we've never watched before on Thursday and Friday because we love the madness. We love the buzzer beaters. We love the drama. <laughs> don't. If it ain't broke, fellas, don't fix it. Please. Do not change the NCAA tournament. They want to expand it to 76 teams, 80 oh. teams. Forget about it. That's Let crazy. me tell you, my, uh, I'm going to do one more restaurant reference. If I go to a restaurant and they have 10 menu items and I look at the menu, I'm like, oh, God, this menu is kind of small. But then I get the dish and it comes out and I'm like, wait a minute, this is really good. I'm going to come back here. Wait, that dish is really good, too. I'd rather have a restaurant be great at 10 dishes than have 45 average ones. Uh, we don't need 70 that's, teams. Nah, you're right. We don't need we don't need 80 teams. Like let's face it, if we're going to be debating St. John's and this and that and all these bubble teams, you're going to just further dilute the regular season. Please, fo college football, operate as your own thing and let the other college sports function in their NCAA thing because it's the one thing that the NCAA is good at is this tournament. Do not Alter. I like it. I You're like right, it. John. Last thing, real quick. We got 30 seconds because we got to go in a little bit. I know you were. I could. I, I saw you on Twitter today. You're pissed off that the uh, transfer window's opening now. It doesn't make sense. I don't know why they don't wait till the end of the tourney, or at least. you 30 seconds on why you're so pissed about this. I mean, I'm I know why. Because but right, the NCAA tournament starts tomorrow with the first four. Right now, there are coaches <laughs> and assistant coaches that have, that have players on their team that are getting calls from teams that aren't in the NCAA tournament, that are That's trying crazy. to get them to transfer to them. 
That's BS, man. Yeah, that is please. awful. Way to open the transfer portal. That is terrible, terrible, terrible. You're 100% right. Why couldn't they just wait a couple of weeks? What's the big deal? I mean, they, those wait. guys can still transfer. Just wait a couple of weeks. Yeah. I don't understand it. And you got NCAA tournament coaches that are trying to manage their own roster for next year, that are trying to keep kids, and That's also stupid. calling other kids to come play for them next year. That's crazy. Let the NCAA tournament be the great entity it is. Wait on all this offseason crap. Thanks, John. John. You're the best. We, we love you, John, buddy. John, when you're in Cleveland, you have an open seat. You need to yeah, come, come in for a full with, show. Come down with us next time. We can, get a, we can get a fillet together. No fillets. <laughs> I'm yeah. taking John to Delmonico's and get big steaks. Yeah, I'll get an avocado, strawberry, mango salad with tigers. <laughs> <laughs>